Hi everyone, Sam Mackay here from Enterprise DNA. Now recently we ran a workshop on supply chain management. It was a it was a member only event, uh, but I just want to cover one of the key insights or, or one of the key techniques that we covered. Um, just so if you have exposure to this sort of analysis in Power BI, you know how to manage it. Now. Let's talk through the scenario. So within a, say, a supply chain uh, or within sort of operations, within within any uh, business that, uh, that sells some goods, it has to obviously buy goods in or make goods. And then obviously there's a sales cycle where someone might order it, so then we might ship it and then it might be delivered. So there's a, there's a logistical uh, piece of analysis that needs to be done there across time. And what you might find in your data is that you have multiple dates. And so when you come across this in Power BI, especially if you're just starting out or you're just trying to learn how to use Power BI effectively, oftentimes you get very confused as to how to organize your model around these multiple dates to actually extract meaningful insights. And so when I look at data like this, I, I say, well, what, what, you know, I immediately think, oh, well, what kind of insights could we showcase here? And the main ones to me could be like, would be like things uh, from a supply chain perspective would be how long does it take for us to, from when we procure something to when we actually sell it from, you know, so we've got a procured date and an order date. So, so what's the average time that it takes for us to sell something or what is the value that we have in our inventory over over that period of time, right? Because from an inventory management perspective, so procure date might be well. I mean, you probably you might you might even procure it, and then it might take a while to actually ship to you. But uh, you know, if we were just to take this procure date as the day that we actually got the stock made or or delivered, uh, and between and between and from here to ship date, well, that's going to give you some insight. So how much how much inventory do we have sort of in our warehouses at any one time? Uh, and you know, could you optimize that over different time periods? Then we also could have well, how much inventory do we have between what's been ordered, but uh, before to to its be, to its delivery date? So how much is in transition? And so some more good insights there as well, right? Now the key here is how do we manage that? How do we get to these insights? And it's a combination of a of a model, <clears throat> the right modeling techniques, and also the right formula techniques. It's very difficult to do one, uh, to get the results you want with only one of those things right. Now, the way that I have done it here, and I and I highly recommend doing it this way, I've I've gone between a couple of different techniques over time of how to do this, and <clears throat> I have always now landed back on you always just want to keep things simple with one date table, in my view. And if you want those sort of insights um, across time, across those different dates, or managing across different dates, what you want to do is you want to create inactive relationships down to your fact table. And you can create multiple of these. So if you have a lot of dates, like a lot of key dates, then you want to create a lot of inactive relationships. Now, all of these inactive relationships all go back to, if I just highlight them, they all go back to in my date table. Obviously, you've got to have a date table. That's a, that's a non-negotiable. They all go back to my date column here, right? Now, once you do it like this, you'll realize that you know, obviously the, the, it's, it's obviously quite simple to do. You can just default to going to inactive relationships. But then it's what sort of formula technique do you use after that to actually get the insight? Okay, and that's sort of what we 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 spend a lot of time covering in the session and the work in the full workshop. You can actually access a, a, a replay of the full workshop if you like on our education platform, so Enterprise DNA Online. Um, definitely check that out. It's it's in the scenario method workshops module. But what we did was we obviously we started off by building out our core measures. So that's what I always put in my key measures folder here. And uh, so I've been able to look at say my quantity sold, my revenues, profits, transactions, costs, etc. Now the key to actually look at insights over time though is utilizing a technique called events in progress it's a for, it's a combination of formulas a combination of dax formulas which enables you to get to that insight and this is it here okay now this technique is very reusable okay what it does is it 
enables us to on any day basically see what is considered open on that day so if on any particular day in this particular so i'm just going along so we're looking at inventory and progress here right and this is broken up by warehouse in this particular case on any particular day here we are looking to see if there are any orders which have an order date less than the current date and a ship date greater than the current date and when i say the current date it's the actual date here so in this particular case 12th of the 5th 2019 okay and this is what we're saying is uh, the amount of inventory which has been ordered but is on its way to be shipped out and so we need to we need to actually have this inventory available in the in the right warehouse so that we can then ship it out to the right location or deliver it to the right location so we need to be optimizing our inventory in the right locations geographically so that we uh, don't have to ship something from one location to another to then get delivered right so this is all about supply chain optimization uh, and so this is the sort of insight that enables you to to be able to get that right to be able to see well do we have enough supplies in our warehouse to actually make up the deliveries that have happened the orders that have that have happened say online or through our um, through our sales network okay and then you'll see here that a lot of these sort of formula combinations these formula patterns they're all the same okay and you need to use these in combination with that model and if you don't have inactive relationships then this particular formula will not work some of you might be thinking well how do how do you actually isolate say you wanted to look at so, say you wanted to look at uh, say the revenue by order date right you actually wanted to see the revenue by order date because you've created these inactive relationships, you have to be able to turn them on in any instance where you want to actually look at something by a particular date. Because the context of date will not automatically work through any of these inactive relationships unless we turn them on. And you can do this very simply using a the use relationship function. So I'll just show you uh, what, that, what that looks like here. Um, have I done that? Oh, date measures up here so revenue by order date right and so all I've done up here is I've gone calculate and with the user relationship you basically the way to think about this is you're turning on an inactive relationship by using this and so I'm just joining up virtually the date column and the date table and the order date column in the sales table and that's what enables me to then actually look at revenue by by any particular date that we want to look at it by and so I'm just going to change this up change this into a table get rid of the hierarchy and then turn that into a visualization so this is now me looking at revenue by by a particular date even though it's not going to happen naturally because of these inactive relationships and then obviously this is always this is dynamic right so say when I have a look at a particular warehouse and I can see here well how much inventory do we have in um, open at any one time right that and remember the inventory that is being ordered and needs to be shipped at any one time and so this number could could dramatically change over time depending on what season we're in for example and that's another good thing you know you, you, you this this is probably not a static number right it's not a not a not an even number it's going to have it's going to ebb and flow and that's where time intelligence can come in um really effectively as well uh, built on top of this technique we can branch out into time intelligence techniques um, but that's for another video. I just wanted to show in this one really highlight the technique around how you manage this. You know, it's 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 perfect for a, su a pl supply chain demo operational type um, analysis. Um, but you know, obviously, it's it could be used in many different scenarios where you have multiple dates. So it's not just isolated to this particular scenario at all. Um, any 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 range of different date type analysis could could really benefit from from utilizing this technique. Okay, I'm going to round off there. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. Please throw the video a like if you did. Really appreciate it. As always, look forward to uh, putting out some brand new content very soon. All the best.